Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I got a really cool SBC to show you guys, which is from Ice World called the Zima board. So let's get started. Now for the last week, I've been actually having a lot of fun with this board because there's just so much you can do. And I'll explain that in a second. But one of the things that they do mention on this box, which is single board server and yeah that is no doubt this is what it can do now this is box is something that they actually ship out to content creators like myself and i'm going to be showing you guys what's inside the contents of this box in a second but first i do want to thank ice Whale for sending this over to me for a review everything i talk about will be linked down in the description below they do have a kickstart going on right now where you can actually get one of the models of this for 99 dollars and i'll talk about the prices in just a second but yes Check out their Kickstarter and also have their link to their main website and all the components that we talk about in this video. All right, so as far as the contents that we get from that box, obviously is the Zima board itself. Then we also get a power adapter that is universal where you could actually change out if you're in Europe or US, you could change out the plugs for that. So we have a 12 volt, three amp supply for this. It also gave me a SATA SSD and that's what I've been using for this test. And also a PCIe 4X NVMe adapter. Now to begin, this board has three different models to it. The Zima board 216, the 432, and the 832. And the numbers adjust to what the specs are in this guy. So 216 means two gigs of RAM, 16 gigabytes of eMMC storage, while 4 432 is four gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, and 832 is eight gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. Now, as far as the hardware on this guy, it's not something you would scream about, It's but it's enough to get the server needs done. Now for the 232 model, you get an Intel Celeron 3350 with two cores clocked at 1.1 gigahertz to 2.2 gigahertz and two gigs of RAM with 16 gigabytes of storage. While the 432 changes up the CPU to an N3450 with 1.1 gigahertz and 2.2 gigahertz turbo boost, four gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. And then the 832 is the same processor as the four, but you get eight gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. Now, as far as the outside of this guy, what makes this so special is that it's actually got a PCIe adapter right on top. You could actually plug in one of these boards for NVMe, or you can even plug in one of these for extra SATA or a 10 gigabyte ethernet or a graphic card if you wanted to. That makes this board very hackable on what they call, but I call it more server wise. Now in the front panel, you get two USB threes, two ethernet ports, a barrel connector, and then a display port for graphics. In the back, you have two SATA connectors and one power pin in the middle. You could actually purchase one of these for two hard drives instead. So they actually pin wire this out so you could fit two hard drives instead of just one. But the one I got is actually just as for a single SATA. And this whole thing, the shell on the outside, is a huge heat sink, which keeps this guy very cool. So there's no fan, it's very passive, it's quiet, and you can run whatever you need without a fan. On the bottom, it comes with a huge acrylic to protect whatever's underneath. And that is about it with this board. The operating system that comes shipped with this is called the CASA OS. And it's actually an operating system I've been meaning to check out since I started the Pi Hosted series because that operating system is really dedicated for running Dockers. And it's built on top of a Debian system. So basically, instead of installing Ubuntu or installing Docker, then installing Portain on top of that, the operating system takes care of that and it has its own interface, which is actually very easy to use. And you could just click on their dashboard to load whatever programs you need or to install any more applications you want. Now, if you guys want me to do a full review on this operating system, let me know down in the comments below because this operating system did pop up on my radar when I was doing Pi Hosted. And yes, it does work on ARM. So yeah, it could be a Raspberry Pi thing. Now I'm also gonna go through the BIOS of this guy just to show you guys what it can do. And it actually has a lot of options. So here it is. All right, so here we have the BIOS screen of the device. Uh, as you can see here, it's got eight gigs of RAM with 1600 megahertz of RAM speed. Uh, advanced, you have a bunch of stuff over here like uh, trusted computing. This is so if you got Windows 11 or Windows 10, uh, ACPI settings, super, I don't know what this is, super IO chip hardware monitor, power management configuration, CPU configuration, and you could also manage the CPU power through here if you want boot performance mode, uh, VTD. I'm guessing I could enable this. Actually, I'll just leave it enabled. Uh, USB configurations, 
bunch of stuff over here as well. No disk PXE. So you could boot from uh, network and you could do UEFI PXE support as well. NVMe configurations for my Samsung. Um, I did stick that one in there just to test. SDIO configurations. Uh, so this is the EMMC. Then you got your thermals right over here. On the chipset, we have your graphic configurations. And yes, you can actually use switches over to PCIe. Uh, you can change the uh, size of the graphic card memory. You also got the south bridge. So you got the audio. Uh, GMM configuration. I'm not too sure what GMM configuration is. ISH controller, LP. This is a lot of stuff you could actually configure. I know like a lot of these boards have it locked down to a point where there's only like two or three, but this one actually has everything open. Um, SATA drives. I actually have two. Uh, one is my M.2 and the other one is my, um, what do you call it? NGFF or something. That's another uh, one. And I also have a SATA SSD in here. Um, SD card support disabled. I don't have that. This is enabled. Oh, I could actually change the max speed of this. Hmm. I got to play around with that one day. I don't know how that will work. You got your secure boot, your regular boot devices, and it does detect all my drives. I got the Samsung Evo. The S, the SATA, EMMC. Oh, actually, it doesn't detect my NGFF thing. And you could also change the boot options if you want to change it back to legacy. And you can enable or disable video if you need it or not. So you have like a headless boot. Save changes. I would always keep the video on anyway. Oh, you know what? You might not need to. If you're going to stick a graphic card in here, then you might not need to use that other option. Now the connector you get on top of the PCIe board is a PCIe 4X and it also has a notch in the back so if you do stick in something that's 8X or 16X it's not going to block it so you could actually use it so as you can see I put a graphic card on here and yeah it does fit. Now the only downside to this is if you keep the panel or the bracket in front it will block the display port so you do have to remove that otherwise it still does fit you don't have to remove it if you're not planning to use display port but yeah. It does block it. Now, before I jump into the benchmark of this guy, I did run a benchmark using the PCIe 4 and the uh, SATA as well. So I'm gonna give you the numbers on those. I'm gonna pop it up on the screen right now. And I don't have it memorized, but the EMMC is a bit slow. I think running at 160 for read and about 100 for write. Again, don't quote me on this. You can just see it on the screen. Uh, for the NVMe, you are getting about 1,800 or 1,600 depending on the SSD that you're using. So you're getting pretty much max speed on that. And on the SATAs, you're getting about 400 something megabytes read and about 400 megabytes write. So it's actually keeping up to wherever it's supposed to be on a normal desktop installation. Now, as far as the real benchmarks on this guy, we have Heavenly Benchmark at 230. Again, not something to bring home about. And I am putting this list on the other mini desktop PCs that I've been testing because technically, since it's an x86, this still could be a mini PC. We also got the Geekbench single core, which is about 311, and the multi core is 1098, which is not, again, super impressive compared to the other ones I have tested because the CPU is not that great. But here's the upside to this since it comes with two NIC ports, you can definitely run this as a router. So you can install PFSense on here, you could install OpenWRT, whatever you want as a router. This will do it because it has the two built-in Ethernet ports. Now, if you don't want to run it as a router, since I have the 8 gigabyte model, I could actually run FreeNAS on this and stick in external storages and go up to, what, six hard drives on this guy and turn this into a NAS, which is another idea that I have with this. Now, if you're not interested in that, you could keep it on CASA and just run Dockers all day long. Now, I do recommend getting the 4 gigabyte model because of the better CPU as well as the more RAM, obviously. So I think out of the whole three different models, the middle one is the best buy for the four gigs of RAM and 32 gigabyte EMMC because you could do the most amount with that, uh, whether you're running a NAS or running Dockers or running whatever you want, that would be great. If you're planning to run like more desktop appliances like Windows 11 or Windows 10 or something that requires a lot more RAM usage, then yes, go ahead and go for you know the eight gigabyte model, but it's not really needed. If you're planning to run say Plex, 
you can slap on a graphic card on this guy, use it to hardware decode, and the four gigs of RAM is more than enough to run Plex on your home network. Anyway, that is about it for this guy. If you guys have any questions about this particular model or wanna see something special done to this guy, let me know down in the comments below. You will be seeing more videos of this because I do wanna test out FreeNAS on this, and I do wanna test out other operating systems on this to see how it would cope. So yeah, you're gonna be seeing more videos of the Zima board on this channel coming soon. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.